Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Victoria and this video is the beginning of a series that I am doing in the month of April all about tallow. We are doing a deep dive into one of the most nourishing traditional fats that there is. And so in this video today, I wanted to just give you the basic education on what exactly is tallow. Have you heard of it? You may not have heard of it or you may have because it's gained some popularity and so yeah i'm just here to give you some education all about tallow so let's dive in okay so what is tallow well tallow is essentially rendered beef fat or rendered beef suet what is suet suet is the specific type of fat from inside an animal that surrounds the internal organs Animals have fat on their internal organs and then also on their muscles. And the muscle fat on an animal can totally be rendered into tallow, but the suet, the fat that surrounds the organs, is gonna be slightly more nutritious and nutrient dense. So either one of them worked fine, but by the technical definition of tallow, it is from the fat surrounding the internal organs of an animal. Specifically, I have heard that the fat surrounding the kidneys is the most nutrient dense fat on an animal. And so that's like the best, most prized kind of fat if you can get to make your tallow with. So tallow is basically rendered beef fat. So what does rendering mean? Well, rendered is the process of making towel, tallow, not towels. <laughs> rendering is the process of taking the fat and heating it at a low temperature until it melts and becomes a liquid and then separating and straining out the liquid that's melted from the grizzly parts that are left and then that liquid is tallow. Tallow can be made from different animals. You can have deer tallow, I believe bear tallow, bison tallow, but the most common one is beef tallow. I do think that it is really important to get your tallow or source your tallow or your beef fat if you're gonna be making your own to source it from pasture raised, happy, healthy cows that are raised ethically and you know local to you if you can. I always am an advocate for shopping from your local farm and finding like the highest quality, healthiest um, farm and meat that you can because a healthy, happy cow means that you're going to have healthier meat. It's not gonna be infused with stress hormones. It's gonna have all the lovely vitamin D from being in the sun. It's gonna have the nutrients that it gets from the grass and from eating the different plants rather than the tallow that you might get from an animal that has been grain fed and has only really been in a barn and not lived their life on pasture. Um, if it's like a factory farmed animal or if it's just been grain fed its whole life, it's not gonna be as nutrient dense and as nutritious. And I honestly probably wouldn't eat it because fat can store a lot of toxins. Um, and so I would make sure that you're really only eating the fat from animals and really just the meat from uh, animals that you know were raised in a healthy, good environment. That's kind of my personal standard. So beef tallow from healthy pasture raised animals has tons of vitamins and minerals. It has all of the fat soluble vitamins of vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, and vitamin E. It also has lots of minerals and natural anti-inflammatory properties. And then it also has your omega-7 fatty acids along with palmitic acid and stearic acid, all of which are really good for skin. And stearic acid in particular actually helps to repair damaged skin and like improve elasticity and help with collagen production in your skin. So it's just really good for skin, both taken internally when you cook with tallow and when you use tallow externally on your skin. Ancient cultures and our ancestors really valued tallow for all of the things that you could do with it, all of its amazing properties. And besides cooking with it and using it externally, they also often made soap and candles with it because it was a good fat that was able to be made for with candles and soap. So that's a really interesting fact. And just the fact that it was so prized by our ancestors and indigenous people, 
you know that there's something special about it when you can appreciate the indigenous wisdom there. Tallow is a great cooking oil because it has a high smoke point. So its smoke point is between 400 and 420 degrees. And so that makes it really great for frying things and frying your great French fries, making fried chicken with it, you know, sauteing your veggies, whatever. It's a great oil for cooking. Tallow can also be used externally on your skin. And a few of the videos in my series coming up next week are gonna be all about using tallow externally on your skin because I'll be honest, I was a skeptic of tallow on skin for a long time. I really resisted it, but I have found one of my favorite brands that actually does not smell like beef. It does not leave you smelling like beef or hamburger at all. And I am genuinely convinced that it is healing my stretch marks. I've been applying it for about a month now, the tallow on my stretch marks, and I have really, really deep, um, deep stretch marks from my two pregnancies and I see improvement after just a month where not only are they lightening, but I feel like they're healing, like the skin is healing. It's actually pretty crazy. And I can't wait to tell you about it next week, but that's not what this video is about. So anyway, I'm going to put all the links in the description for the products I recommend. I'm also gonna link my blog post that I wrote about this in the description, which will also have links if you wanna check it out. Leave a comment below and let me know, do you cook with tallow or have you ever used tallow on your skin? And what do you think about it? I hope this video was helpful to you, and if it was, be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.